permutation channel importance works by permuting or shuffling the pixels in a given channel. We do this for every image in our data set. Comparing the performance of a model on the data before and after it is permuted will tell us whether it uses that channel to make predictions. Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to ADO. In this video, we're going to discuss the theory behind PCI. Specifically, we're going to look at the role of permutation in computer vision, explain the steps used in the PCI algorithm, and explain the applications of PCI. In a later video, we will apply the method to a coastal image segmentation model using Python. So PCI is a relatively simple XAI method. And as a result, its insights are limited. It can really only tell us one thing, and that is which channels are important to a model's predictions. We will see that for RGB images, this can help explain whether color is an important aspect to prediction. But we'll really see that this method is more useful when dealing with remote sensing problems. These typically use more complex inputs with many channels. If you are new to XAI, then PCI is a great place to start. This is because understanding the permutations used in this method provides a good basis for understanding more complex permutation methods like occlusion and SHAP. This is why I've chosen it as one of the first lessons in a larger XAI course for computer vision that I'm working on. It's going to be completely free and open source, and I'll, I'll chat a little bit more about that at the end of the video. For now, you can already find the article for this lesson in the description. It should be useful if you miss some of the finer details we discuss here. In computer vision, permutation is when we rearrange pixels or groups of pixels within an image. And we can do this randomly or systematically. In terms of explainable AI, this is done to understand which parts of the image are most important to predictions. And we do this by comparing the model performance before and after that part has been permuted. Many XAI methods rely on permutations in some form. For example, occlusion maps work by systematically masking out squares of an image. On the other hand, SHAP works by permuting different combinations of subsets of pixels. We will discuss both occlusion and SHAP in a later lesson. For now, we will use permutation in a different way. That is, for PCI, we shuffle every pixel in a channel. So suppose we take this image and predict what type of plant it is. We then shuffle the red channel and make a prediction with this permutated image. If the predicted probabilities using the original image are significantly different from those using the permutated image, then this tells us that the model was using the red channel to make predictions for this instance. We can then simply repeat this process for all images and channels in our data sets. So unlike occlusion or SHAP, which can tell us which region or parts of an image is important, PCI will tell us whether an entire channel is important. Before we get into the applications of PCI, it's worth discussing the algorithm more formally. To calculate PCI scores, we start with some initial values or choices. C is the number of channels, N is the number of images, k is the number of repetitions to average over, f of x is a trained model, and p is our performance metric. For RGB images, c will be 3. We will see that for remote sensing problems, c can be much larger. n is usually the size of the validation or testing dataset. Lastly, we need k as the permutation process is random. Repeating the calculation will give us a more stable estimate of PCI scores. To calculate PCI, we start by calculating a baseline performance value. To do this, we pass the original images into our trained model and calculate the value for our performance metric. Then, for a given channel i, we calculate the PCI score by step 1, 
Permutation. For all n images, we randomly shuffle the pixels within an image of that channel. Step two, we use the permutated images as input to the trained model to generate predictions. Step three, performance. We calculate P across the n images using the model's predictions with the permuted channel. Step four, importance. We compare the permuted performance to the baseline. This is typically done by subtracting the values to find the decrease in performance. Step five, repeat. We repeat the steps k times and take the average decrease in performance. In the end, the average decrease in performance is the PCI score for this channel. The precise interpretation of a PCI score will depend on your choice of P. For classification tasks, we can use metrics like accuracy or AUC. For regression, we can use NSE or R squared. And when we apply the method in next week's video, you will see that for segmentation, we can use metrics like average accuracy. So as I mentioned, PCI can really only tell us whether specific channels are important to a prediction. And the usefulness of this insight will depend on your problem. Let's start with RGB images. Consider these for instances from the pot plant data set. This is an image classification problem where we try to use the image to predict the name of the pot plant. When we apply PCI to a model trained on this data set, we get similar scores for each of our channels. Specifically, we get a score of 35%, 39%, and 35% for the red, green, and blue channels. These give us the decrease in the accuracy on the test set when each of these channels is permuted. And this tells us that all of the channels are being used by the model to make predictions. Now, we can go a little bit deeper. This plot gives the PCI scores for each pot plant separately. We can see that a channel's importance varies for each class. For example, the green channel is most important when making predictions for Rudo, but it is the least important for Greg. Now, we're getting these results because the brightly colored pots are introducing bias into our data sets. And in a later lesson, we will use saliency maps to show that the model is actually using the pixels from the pot and not the plant to make predictions. The results we get from PCI can just provide some additional evidence that it is the color of the pots that are causing these errors. In general, PCI can tell us whether color is an important aspect for a model's predictions. If only one channel is used by the model, then we can simplify the model's input by grayscaling the images or only selecting that important channel. And these kinds of insights become far more valuable when we start dealing with more complex data sources. The RGB colors we see are all reflected radiation or light waves of different wavelengths. In remote sensing, we deal with images taken with advanced sensors on satellites or other aircrafts. Multispectral images include wavelengths that are not visible to the human eye, like the near infrared or NIR band. They can also include microwaves from synthetic aperture radar or data quality channels that include things like image segmentation masks for clouds. Just like RGB channels, these new channels are grids of pixels. So thankfully, we can apply the exact same deep learning architectures. We will see this when we apply PCI to a coastal image segmentation model trained on multispectral images. And we'll also see that the complexity of this data source is where PCI really shines through and provides some valuable insights. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is part of a wider XAI for computer vision course. I also plan to cover methods like SHAP, GradCam, and deconvolution. And if there's anything else you'd like to see in the course, please let me know in the comments. There will be an option to buy an ebook if you want to access the course content offline. And there'll also be a paid version of the course 
where you will get the ebook for free, a certificate, and you can watch all of the videos ad free. If you want to support this work, you can get that course right now and you will get all of the benefits in the future.